Hi everyone, this is Joanna. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I wanted to show you how to make this really neat pendant. And I will be using translucent uh, clay mixed with alcohol inks. And you can see that once you bake them, um, when, once you bake the translucent clay, you get this really, really neat dimension to the clay. It's very, very cool. I absolutely love it. So let me show you how I did it. So let's grab some tra translucent clay and I, right here, I mix it with sunshine yellow, sunshine yellow and a drop of terracotta color. Now the terracotta is 100% this one, so this is just translucent with the terracotta, but I decided to add a drop of terracotta into this one so that it kind of brings down the brightness. Now this one here is a color that if you have used um, alcohol inks, you will not believe what this is. This is actually the cranberry. The actual cranberry is much darker, but when you mix it with the translucent, it's not as dark after all. So I mix my clays, and I am ready to start playing with them. Now, what I'm gonna do is I am going to uh, use Makume Gain technique to roll them and slice them. I'm gonna start by layering all three colors, one on top of the other. Now you can, you can tell that once you mix it with the alcohol inks, the texture of the clay slightly changes. They are a little bit softer. Um, I'm gonna slice it and I'm gonna roll it. You know what? I should have rolled it just a little bit thinner. So let me do that. It's just a little bit too thick for me. Okay, so now we can layer it and we'll once again roll it out. Let's roll it. I am not as neat as some other people um, that are doing Makume Gain technique. It's always such a perfect rectangle. Uh, it's not working for me, really. <laughs> okay. All right, one more cut, and I think that we are going to be good to go. And you can see that all the different layers and all the different colors that we are getting. There. I think we should be okay with that. I don't want to layer it too, too much. So, it's very nice and soft and pliable. Now with my Pasma Kumagin, I would take it and just cut things, cut in the design. I'm not going to do it this time. I'm just going to press it on both sides. I want just very subtle movement of the clay. I don't want any lines or distinctive lines or cuts or anything like that. All right, so let's roll this out and see what we have. All right, so there you go. I already rolled out black. This is my black clay. So as I'm going to start slicing, I will be placing it, placing the clay let me just move my pendant. I will be putting, uh, placing the the clay on black. All right. So there's my one slice, and like I said, you will see that the I think the texture of translucent in itself is a little bit different than regular clay, but it's even more so now that you have added the alcohol ink to it. But you can see that it did, we have some variation in color, which is what I was looking for. I just don't want too much of it. I want a very subtle. Almost, you know, it started off by, I wanted, by the me seeing a necklace that looked, reminded me of a lava flow. And, I decided that I wanted to make something that looks like a lava flow and this kind of reminded me of that. It's very flowy. There. We're not going to have to I'm not going to slice the whole thing. I just want to show you guys 
how to make that one pendant with it. Okay, there you go. So I'm going to put this on the side. I'm going to cut off the black. I'm not going to use it right now. So I don't want it to have it mixed. There. And grab some paper. And roll it out a little bit. Very nice. Roll out some more. So it's more uniform. Oh, that's exactly what I was looking for right here. Oh, I love this. All right. There you go. <laughs> You see that? Very nice. There are a couple of cracks here that I want to get rid of, so let me get rid of those really quick. Oh, this one doesn't want to go away. All right, so anyways, so this is what I have right here. This is what I'm going to play with. All right, this is a big sheet. I'm not going to need the whole thing. Now, this pendant is basically an oblong um, triangle that I basically took the the top off and I rolled it in so that I can put my cord in. So you have seen me before I <laughs> tried to make makeshift um, uh, my own cutters if I don't find one that I like so this is actually a brace for I think a water heater I want to say that we were not using I was trying to create something with it and I decided that you know I kind of like this you can totally freehand it but this is what I'm going to use today so let's start with that let me see I'm going to do I want to give it one more roll here like this edge but all right so let me cut that out It's kind of funny that I just take stuff and I, and my husband will be looking for the brace for the water here and the brace is no longer there. <laughs> All right, so here is my little triangle. There you go. Now, what I'm going to do is, well, first of all, I want to make it just a little bit longer right here. I want it to be just a little bit longer and also I want the corners right here not to be as triangular I want to round them off so I'm just gonna chop them really quick just like that and now I can go ahead and fix it almost like a teardrop but not really so I would think that you can actually use the teardrop cutout for it too if you have one, that would work. So I'm just going to go and make sure that it's nice and round. And I'm going to show you how I am doing the outside of it. So, I think that's good for me. This is good. It's not going to be as wide as this one, but that's okay. Now, so what I did was... I was playing with the clay and I decided that I wanted to add the little border around so I still have my leftover clay right here so what I did was I just sliced it one slice and two slices and took it and I created a border now if you have a longer piece of clay that would be better because then it would go completely all around but it's okay to do it just with a with a small one we can always connect at the bottom and it's going to be just fine it's going to look just fine
Now the top part of this pendant is going to be rolled up, so I'm really not going to worry too terribly much about how it looks on top because you just simply are not going to see it. Okay. Alright. So you can see can kind of see how I did it. I'm going to tap it in. Like I said on top, I'm not really worried about the top. I want to make sure that it's nicely stuck to it. Right here, I'm just going to connect it nicely. Like just like that. Just a nice smooth roll. Just to make sure everything is nicely attached. Alright, so for the texture, what I did was I grabbed my stylus. Actually, let me just roll it out just a tiny bit. Uh, so I just grab my stylus and the thinner one, the thinner end of it, and I just went ahead and I created a little dotted border. And it's so nice because, well, first of all, you still see the black line and then you have the, the transition from the color to black to the color again. But also if you have any misperfections, imperfections, I'm sure, I'm sorry, um, that will take care of that. You will not see them, including our little junction here. And you know, texture is just nice. Having two different textures, if you feel very ambitious, you could put resin on the center part of it. I'm not that ambitious today. Mm -hmm. Alright. Okay, so now we're going to lift it up. Are we getting there? And look at this. Look at the colors. The color is so different right now. Because when you bake it, it really will change into something that mm, unexpected, sort of. And then when you put the varnish on it, that's even, even more so. So here I'm just going to grab a, um, a brush and I'm going to turn it. You, you, you want to make sure that you're creating that nice little loop over there. Pull it out. And now it's up to you how long you want it. If you want to keep on looping it, you can. This is pretty much the same size and I kind of liked it. But I just want you to pay attention to the color. It's just so different um, right now. And then when you take it out of the oven, oven it's going to look completely different. Very, very cool. And I don't know if I mentioned to you guys, I don't know how these little dots come up. Do you see that? I guess it has to do with the the way I apply the alcohol in color on it. I'm not sure. All right, so here you go. Now you can just throw it in the oven just like that. I'm gonna make a little doodad here that I'm gonna put on. <laughs> All right, so I have my little guy here, and let me cut off a piece with a little bit darker color, more darker color in it. So it's a mix. And I'm gonna roll it. There's some left over here. Let's roll it off. Just roll it out. 
as even as you can. I'm going to place this right here. And every time I do it, it's a new attempt. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I just take it and start rolling. I'm sure you guys are much better at it than I am. I'm just playing with it right now. And off we go. All the way to the back. And we're gonna cut it in the back. Look at that. Ha ha! Not perfect. But I always say it's not perfect because it's handmade. So we can just adjust this nicely here. And you know what, I think I'm happy with this. I think it looks fine. But I just want you to pay attention to how different it's going to look when it comes out of the oven. And it has everything to do with the translucent clay and how much of alcohol ink you put in it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And watch my next video where I'm going to show you what to do with the scraps because you are going to have some. Thanks for watching. Ta-ta!